Hey, what's going on everyone? Boylon here and hope you're all enjoying your Saturday or whatever day it happens to be when you watch this. And today I wanted to talk to you guys a bit about the Hydra rework slash Baron Zemo release that we heard from yesterday's blog post since it's still fresh in my brain. More specifically though, I wanted to go over them and start theorycrafting who we might be able to use as a fifth character. And prior to this video, I was off screen looking around a little bit through my roster to see who might be suitable candidates, and I thought of a few of them. Now, this is mostly if you're probably in the late game, I mean, late game situation like myself, where I kind of have most of my real teams developed, so I don't want to pull characters from other teams and break those up. The Hydra rework and Baron Zemo kit was pretty bonkers though and I encourage people to go through the blog post yourself or my video on the blog if you haven't already. I'll leave both of these in the description below and as a recommended video at the end. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now first of all, I did want to go back through the, the blog post. I have the blog post on my other monitor that you guys can't see. But I wanted to put it up and put it side by side with the, the with Crossbones uh, Winter Soldier and Hydra Grenadier and kind of see what changes that were made and how it stacks up to what they are now. Because uh, there were some mentions for a lot of the, other than the base stats, which included some stuff to their kits, to their uh, abilities. And I just want to see how much difference it really made. So we're going to start off with Hydra Grenadier. And now he was mentioned quite a bit there. So unfortunately for the basic and the special, it just says increased damage. It doesn't say how much. So I don't actually have it up to the rank six level here. And it does apply slow and looks like at level 6 anyways it does 190% damage uh, to primary and secondary targets with 15% piercing. So it just says on the blog post it says increased damage so we don't really know at this point how much that's going to be. Uh, so we can't really say <laughs> how much better that's going to be. But the corrosive grenade also same thing it just says increased damage so who knows how much that could be. That's 160% at level 6 and clearing one positive effect each target and repeat this so it, ha it happens twice so that's kind of neat and now the passive hydra arsenal so this does say here so at level four it would be 20 percent focus it does say on the text on the blog post it says plus 40 percent focus so that's an improvement of 20 percent and all hydra allies are getting 40 percent. so that's quite a bit and then the new thing added was that if zemo is an ally then he gains plus 20 percent damage so that's a fair bit for a minion you know to have their damage increase so not only are they is he getting 20 percent across the board but his basic and special will also be getting increases too so uh, next on the list is Winter Soldier. Now, his base stats was increased by 10% health and 10% speed, so <laughs> my Winter Soldier isn't super built up. I am ready to rank up to 7 star, though, and I will probably do that in the near future. Uh, so his... Uh, let's just skip past the health, though. Let's look at the speed. So he is actually quite slow. So 91, that's a 10% increase of 9.1, so that'll get him at roughly 100 speed or so. So that's fairly average. It might even be a bit below average still. I, I didn't actually realize he was that slow. So I think the turn bar, the turn order might matter. But on Baron Zemo's kit, they do get a 40% speed bar, 40% uh, spe speed in general, sorry, across the board for non-minion Hydra allies. So that might make a big difference. Now the special Relentless Assassin, uh, it says in the blog post, attack primary target for 210% damage. So now it says... Uh, at level 6 it says 200% plus apply bleed. That's the same that I'm seeing. Maybe he's getting a... I don't know if this is the level 6 or level 7 what I'm reading on the blog post because it says on the blog post 210. Now... Oh, I, oh so it might be a 10% increase, sorry, because the level 7 is damage on bonus attack. So, I'm, so it's a 10% increase. That doesn't seem like much. The bleed part is still the same. Uh, the bonus attack now is guaranteed. So two bonus attacks for 150% damage. So the bonus part, I think, is... Actually, maybe that's not even being improved either because that's from level 7. So I guess it's just guaranteed bonus attacks two times rather than 70% chance. So that's what's being guaranteed there. And it's a higher increase to chance bleed. It's 75% instead of 50%. So it uh, looks like if you're going to want to improve the damage on the bonus attack, you're still going to need those tier 4s, unfortunately. Now, he also did get an update to his passive Expert Assassin. So, it here says 15% crit, 5% crit to all Hydra allies, and then goes up to 10% uh, with the T4s. Now, on the text, it says 15% crit, which he still has. If Zemo is an ally, gain plus 20% max health less than you, and then 10% crit chance for self and all. So, that's all the same. The only thing that's actually been changed is that he gets 20% max health with... Uh, Baron Zemo, so that's a bit unfortunate. I thought there was maybe a little bit more to the kit, but I guess not. So that's it for Winter Soldier, and let's jump over to Crossbones, where he did get a 10% health increase, 5% damage, and 3% armor. So 
I mean, my, my crossbones is fairly leveled. That's because he was pretty meta back in the day. <laughs> if you've been playing for as long as I have, like two years ago, then some of the meta was like crossbones, kingpin, surprisingly, Yondu, Quake, characters like this. So his detonate was very powerful. And usually the meta came down to whether or not you can kill crossbones or, or stun him or whatever before the detonate went off because it was that powerful. It was basically a, a game ender. <laughs> so his special wrath gets improved here. He, he gets to heal for 20% max health. What is he at now? He's at 15, so that goes up by 5%. And then if Zemo is an ally, heal for 30%. So that's actually not terrible given the amount of health that he does get. 30% isn't terrible. Uh, his ultimate detonate he gains defense up so it looks like nothing none of this is really changing and he does inflict damage to himself as well um, and he does gain uh, defense up after the detonate so or, or I'm presuming it's after the detonate or maybe it's during you know so I wonder if that might even soak up some of the damage that he does to himself I don't know so we'll have to wait and see about that and then his passive vengeance this gets changed a little bit as well so the text on the blog post said Plus 20% max health, that looks to be the same here. If Zemo is an ally though, gain an additional 20% max health. Also if Zemo is an ally, generate ability energy for self. Now this is designed to give him the extra ability energy for the detonate, so that his detonate ultimate will be turn 1 rather than turn 2. And everything else looks to be the same, I think. Hydra allies gain 5%. Yeah, so that, that hasn't changed. It's just the Zemo stuff. So it was a bit misleading in the fact that it listed everything in his passive, making it sound like it changed. But largely, it's just the Zemo changes. So, and I'm not going to talk about Red Skull, uh, but Red, Red Skull has ultimate adjusted slightly, and now it's unavoidable. So we're not going to really go into there. Now I just wanted to go through my roster a little bit and kind of go over a handful of characters that I think could go into that fifth slot and you know I was wondering like who am I not using in full teams and who could I put in there because there's a especially in Alliance War there's a, there's more than a handful of characters that I'm not really using too much and that maybe could fill in that spot so going down the list here I think the first one that that came to mind for me was OG Spider-Man now this might be a strange pick and depending on where you're using him for your Spider-Verse I'm actually not using him in my Spider-Verse team occasionally I actually use him with Black Bolt because I don't use the full Inhumans team either um, but I actually don't use with the symbiotes I just use the three symbiotes uh, Shuri and Drax currently so Spider-Man is in a weird position for me I have him at a de <laughs> decent power level. Don't ask why he's tier 13. I, I think it's because he was one of my best Red Star pulls back in the day and I decided to do it. Now why I think he could actually be in there is because of Web Slinger, his special. He, he applies defense down uh, to for two turns to all the characters that he chains to. Now the, I don't think that anyone of the four Hydra characters apply defense down so this could actually make them even more weaker or, or sorry make the damage that I guess the Hydra teams do that much more when the defense down is applied. Also, he's fairly fast, so I'm not sure where in the turn order it's going to be for him, given that Zemo does also give a lot of speed to the rest of the, uh, the I guess, Winter Soldier and Crossbones, but this could be a possibility here. If he can somehow get this defense down before the detonate, this could generate a lot of extra damage. Also, Baron Zemo's passive, I recommend everyone checking out the kit online or in my video that, you know, he does clear all positive effects on the enemy so if any of them have immunity or whatever they have this will be cleared so this would be quite easy for spider-man to come in and hit defense down on them other than that there's nothing really that i would say that <laughs> he really does that would totally benefit from them and there's not really any synergy there but you know spider-man is a decent standalone character so i could see that being added now next on my list is ultron now ultron's uh pretty self-explanatory you know he's a very easy drag and drop character that can be placed Kind of around with different teams uh, and his Ultron bot train is also really self-explanatory. Lots of buffs, lots of turn bar for everyone and a lot of extra damage. Now, if he does manage to get kills, he will extend buffs on Crossbones and Hydra Grenadier being that they're both villain tech. A lot of people have decided to use Ultron more recently on what is called Xtron though with his S, sorry, which is X-Men and Ultron which is often used to take out the Black Order. But maybe depends on where you're at in the game. You know, this could be a possibility to drag Ultron into there for the moment until we get maybe a potential fifth down the line. Now, next on my list, maybe a bit of a surprise. Where can I find him here? Who I was looking for? And that's Captain America. One of Zemo's own enemies here since Crossbones will be getting a turn one detonate. There won't be anyone with taunt out of the gate. So you could use him to use his Inspire, which is his taunt. 
It'll spread some ability energy around to other characters, but the defense up portion might be a little bit redundant because of Zemo. Uh, Zemo does uh, passively gen uh, give two turns of defense up to Hydra allies, so I think this part, the defense up part, might be redundant. The taunt might be nice, and he's throwing out, I don't know, one... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> one extra ability energy M might be helpful, and and he'll tank for you for a little bit. So, you know, I'm not really using him much elsewhere. So, hey, maybe you could use him as well. Add a little bit of added protection while the others do their thing. Now, next on my list, if I can remember where he is on my list, anyways, I think he's up here. Yondu. So another character without a home, but someone who would probably just kind of be there. He's got a neat passive which allows you to steal positive effects from random enemies, but given Zemo's kit, they'll probably all be gone anyways because Zemo does clear positive effects already, so I don't know what's going to be left maybe necessarily for him. Uh, otherwise, he's just kind of adding a little bit of damage with his Yak Arrow, so this is AoE piercing damage, I think, so it's not terrible. Not the worst, not the best, but depending on, you know, if you have him powered up already, you could just drag and drop him in there. Uh, I have him up, again, for the same reason why I had Crossbones up. was very kind of meta at the time two years ago, but he's kind of he's kind of dropped off the, the grid a little bit since Ravagers aren't really a thing. But you can just throw him in for additional damage if that's all you need. Now, for my next, after that, Drax. Again, if you need a sort of drag and drop character, Drax is a surprisingly useful one because of his ability to spawn taunt. His speed is also kind of slow, which kind of makes him more effective as a tank. Uh, right now, I use him typically with my three symbiotes and Shuri as an offensive team, but for others, you might be able to use Drax to provide that bit of taunt while the rest of the team mops up. So, this could be a possible choice for you guys for that Hydra foursome as well. Uh, I haven't decided who I'm going to be using yet. Now, there's a few others that are kind of like, eh, and that's going to be, if I can find her, <laughs> Night Nurse. Again, sort of the character who is just there and would provide a little bit of extra healing to the team. I don't expect a lot of people to actually have Night Nurse leveled up. Uh, the only reason why I do is because she was actually quite useful back in the day uh, with Ultima 6, where she was really the only healer in town. Right now, she's just kind of sitting on the bench for me, so I, I don't know if I would actually use her or not, if she would be that effective. If you need a healer, I don't know. Um, but, you know, maybe I could try using that and see what's more effective. There's a couple more that I'm thinking about as well. Now, it's a little, probably a little bit for this right here. Hand Sentry. So now we're getting somewhere a bit with the choices. Hand Sentry Spoke Bomb is actually fairly effective. And, and in the past, Hand Sentry is, is, a, is a really good drag and drop character as well. So when it comes to inadvertently tanking or hiding people with stealth, you know, stealth and evade, you know, it does really well. Also, this might synergize a little bit with Baron Zemo, at least on war offense, because he does also apply extra uh, extra evades on enemy minion turns. So I don't know if this is going to actually cause that to stack, but I know that he can stack his own evades up to three. So I don't know how the smoke bomb might interact with that. But anyways, a stealthy defense here, and you might be able to provide extra protection for them while they do their thing as well and kill the rest of the team. There is one, one more honorable mention that I wanted to bring up actually and I think he's quite low on my list because I don't level him and that's Kingpin so Kingpin poor Kingpin uh, he also doesn't really have a home usually floats about around with different teams been using him with, lately with Marauders until I get Emma Frost unlocked but I could see him move over as well unfortunately uh, his ultimate buffs are slightly redundant with Zemo so again the defense up is kind of redundant since he does get two turns uh, sorry, the Hydra characters get two turns of defense up with Zemo. Um, but the offense up, then there might be some value here because it does... Sorry, offense up the whole team there for only one turn. The unfortunate part of this, a lot of people used to use Kingpin and Crossbones together because of the turn two Crossbones alt previously. Now that's been bumped up to turn one, and I think he's definitely going to be taking his turn before Kingpin does. So he's going to be detonating, uh, probably unless you save it for whatever reason, he's, he's going to be using it on turn one instead of two so he won't be able to take advantage of this but it might still be worth it for the, the damage in general uh for the turn two and whatnot because kingpin's kind of slow so he's probably going to be taking his turn afterwards now so this could be a good choice kingpin normally floats around with other teams when there's not a fifth character because of his buffs and his sort of supporty sort of nature there summons some bodyguards with a special and does actually assist with villain characters so there is some value in there with kingpin uh, maybe a little bit more with kingpin than some of the other characters so and actually while i'm on the, the subject there is one very last one and <laughs> this will be a this might be really far left field and that's going to be beast 
Now, Beast does have quite an interesting kit, and honestly, I don't think I'll be placing him in my X-Men team at this time, based on where I have him at, because he's kind of low power, uh, and he, but he has a very supporty kit, and probably a better choice over Night Nurse, likely. Uh, he can heal other characters with his special, and it does some AoE damage at the same time, and he provides a range of buffs with his mutant enhancements, which doesn't just work on X-Men characters, so you get offense up for self and all blasters and brawlers, so that's going to apply to... Um, Winter Soldier and defense up to protectors and controllers. So Zemo, oh sorry, the blaster might also be Hydra Grenadier as well. And the defense up to um, Baron Zemo and Crossbones if they need it. Again, might be kind of redundant and then speed up to himself and ability energy to himself. So maybe not the best choice, but he does get to flip on his basics. So that's kind of neat if his focus was high enough to do that. That could be helpful in, in the war offense match that you're doing, depending on who you're going up against. So... These are the characters that I thought of, and, you know, there, there could be others, and but I think that's really it. I honestly can't think of any other decent characters that really, you know, wreck, an, wreck another team by adding them in there. I don't want to break up any existing, you know, mainstay teams, teams that are already uh, solidified. I don't want to break up any of those. I'm interested to know if you guys have thought of anyone else worth using in here, though, and who knows, maybe we will get another Hydra character down the line that will eventually fill this slot anyway, so... Kind of just like the Young Avengers, we're going to have to theory craft and, you know, mix and match with who we want to use as a fifth character. Or maybe they'll be so powerful as a foursome that it might not even matter who you use in these slots. But uh, I hope some of these choices maybe helped you guys think about who you might want to use. And that's all for me for today, though. I just wanted to do a quick follow-up video on Hydra while it was still fresh in my mind. I'm not sure who I'm thinking specifically for my fifth member, but given how high I have them, I might consider OG Spider-Man. Hand Sentry, or maybe Kingpin. Uh, those seem like decent choices to start off with without ruining too much. But like I said, I'm interested to know who you guys might consider using, so leave any other thoughts in the comments section below, and let's have a conversation about it. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their weekend though, and of course, if you enjoyed my video, then please smash that like button down below, and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. But until next time guys, stay safe. Boylan signing out.